So far, we've done a pretty good job. We have a class called car. We have a couple of variables in the class. And we have two constructors that let us create instances of the car class in our program. Now, let's add a little more functionality to our car. And let's let the car actually behave a little bit like a car and do some stuff. Now, this is going to be by adding some methods. Now, here comes our first method, public, void, print, speed. One thing I might want to know in my program is I might want to be able to print out the speed of my car. Now, what I do is I basically write a block of code. And you give this block of code a name. So I've named this method print speed. Public will explain a little later, and void will explain a little later. So for now, public void, name of the method. And this is going to be a very simple method. I'm just going to print line. Speed is, and I'll print the speed out. Now, to use a method that you've made in the class, you basically do just what you do with any of the variables that you've made. You just access that method. So let's go to our car runner here and test out the print speed method we just wrote. So you'll see here I have license plate, position, speed. So the speed is 5 right now. Let's just test it out. Let's just go, hey, Bob, print your speed out and give us a quick run. And you'll see here, car created with overloaded constructor. That's good from this line. And then bob.printSpeed. Bob, access your print speed method. And there you go. You got your speed is 5. Okay, let's keep adding on here really quickly. What I'm going to do in my car class is I don't just want a print speed. Let's write another one, public void speed up. Now this is the good one. Speed up should speed up the car. By default, I'm going to say we speed up by 1. Now, here's the clever part. Remember, we're making this class to represent an object or a thing that's in our program. And this thing is a car. Well, every car has a speed variable. So, let's scroll down here and let's change that speed variable. Speed plus plus. Okay, so the speed goes up by one. Let's add another method, public void, slow down, speed minus minus. Now the neat thing with speeding up is we can literally speed up forever, but there is one thing about slowing down. I could just quickly ask here if speed is less than zero, speed equals zero. So I'm not going to let my car go below zero. I know you might argue in physics or something you could go negative speed, but we're just going to say no. Okay, zero is as slow as this car can go. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Speed up, slow down. Let's give these two methods a test out in our runner here. I print the speed. Bob dot speed up. Bob dot speed up. Bob print speed. Bob slow down. Bob dot print speed. Now I know this won't test out our bottom line zero here. But hopefully you know that if I start at a speed of 5, speed up should speed them up to 6, speed them up to 7, print it out, slow it down, print out. And when we test it out, you'll see that it's working just fine. 5, 7, 6. Keep in mind, I sped up twice there, right? And that's why I jumped from 5 to 7. Now in the next video, we're going to look at how to make these methods even better. Because you're probably saying to yourself, if I want Bob to speed up by 20, I certainly don't want to type this out 20 times. Well, of course, that's going to be the next thing we teach you how to do. We're going to teach you how to send numbers in there so you can tell it how fast to speed up or slow down the car. Okay, so we'll see you in the next video.